Moving forward. I would like uh, to talk about the future of car mobility in the next two decades. And for me, there is a, well, rather huge reason uh, to do that. I just am new in the field of academia. I published my thesis four years ago, uh, which the thesis was about the car dependent society. It was in Dutch. And I had the possibility trans to translate it uh, in an English book uh, with Ashgate, The Car Dependent Society, A European Perspective. I wrote that book because for me car dependence uh, was very important. I, I had a career as a, a director of also the Transport Research Institute in the, the Netherlands, but more as a managing director and in the field of environment. And I was a member of parliament. And um, in that time, uh, our family did grow up and I had to um, uh, drive our children our two daughters to lots of places and I don't like driving uh, uh, that much so I, I ask myself why am I all the time uh, 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 driving uh, especially with kids because I was accustomed to go out in the woods and play everywhere and, and well my children were driven to, uh, to uh, friends uh, uh, to hobbies uh, to everything in between and then I started really thinking about what is uh, happening to society related to a car and to car use so that's basically my uh, my orientation to write and to tell the story to you. I asked myself seven questions uh, when we talk about the future of uh, car mobility. And I would also like to answer those uh, questions. The first question is looking at cars. Will the normal car, the car that we know now for years, will this car remain? Well, my answer is uh, probably, probably. Uh, it's clear that uh, the car has been a very resilient subject. The car has changed, has become more environmental friendly, uh, has become more energy uh, uh, friendly. The car has lots of extra comfort um, uh, in its, uh, in its um, style uh, and in its setup. That's one. Uh, but there's also an element of stagvation in uh, uh, the car, the normal car. I have to explain that word, I think. Stagvation is a combination of stagnation and innovation. Well, the stagnation is um, the fact that the car is more or less still doing the same sort of things as it did in the, in, in the 50s, that basically hasn't changed. The whole setup of cars haven't changed. But there was innovation. There was innovation in that small area of stagnation. We innovated a lot and the car industry innovated a lot. And probably there is a plea to make that they will keep innovating, getting uh, more energy friendly cars and so on and so forth. So that's about the normal conventional car that we have now. Well, the second question is, uh, again, again on cars, will electric mobility do the job? Well, electric mobility is lots uh, about hope. Everybody hopes that electric mobility will be the future because it looks so nice, it looks so uh, friendly. There is a sort of deus ex machina uh, element in uh, that electric mobility. We tried it for already a century ago, there was electric mobility. 50 years ago, we talked about electric mobility and we're doing it again at this moment. But when you really look at what has to be changed in the field of infrastructure, on electric mobility. That's really a lot. Uh, and it's, um, uh, it's questionable whether um, the organizations that um, uh, have to change together the car industry, 
the infrastructure uh, providers, uh, the people that uh, do the work on batteries, uh, uh, the research areas, whether they all fit together to make a good business case. And even when they make a good business case, let's be clear on one element that is often forgotten when we talk about uh, electric mobility. And that's how long it takes before a car park is changed. Um, in the Netherlands, and I think in France and uh, in uh, Germany, it now takes something like to, from 14 to 16 years before a car park has changed. Well, that's, that was before the crisis. With the crisis, we now move with 30% uh, less car purchases, which means that the time will be longer. Well, having said that, you then talk about changing the car park towards electric mobility will take first the years to have a business case and then something like 16 to 20 years, which means that somewhere around 2035, 2040, we really have electric mobility. Well, the third one, will it be smart mobility? You know, smart mobility is about lots of IT in cars. Cars that can speak to each other, cars that can speak uh, with the road, cars that get lots of data, and you have all sort of, IT. basically the car becomes a sort of IT product. Well, possible. But how many people really want to purchase such a car? There's also a question to be, to be put. Um, because basically the dead cars are rather expensive still, will become cheaper, but there is a big group of younger people that are basically looking for basic mobility and not for all those IT in cars, because they already have the ITs on their iPhones, they have the ITs on their smartphones and they will have the IT everywhere else, so they don't need it on the dashboard. It's needed on the dashboard for the group of older people but there you have a split, because the elderly don't need all those travel information. They just go uh, uh, on journey uh, after congestion time and so on and so forth. So they need safety, which is another story. And the middle group of the middle ages, well, they who mostly drive lease cars. They really want um, uh, um, um, IT cars. So there is also here questionable what will be the situation? Well, to sum up those three questions, it's rather unclear what sort of cars we will be driving in the next uh, 20 years. Well, is that important? Well, basically it's important how the future of car mobility would look like. Car mobility is now good for 80% of all the miles or other kilometers uh, traveled in our uh, uh, Western uh, societies. And we are facing lots of big problems. We are facing the problem of oil, oil delivery. Will oil, fossil fuel be there all the time in the next uh, two uh, decades? Or will we have real problems with the delivery of oil? We have the problem of climate change. But look at it, that really in 2050 you need a 60 to 80 percent reduction in CO2 uh, compared to 1995. Well, all the scenarios that we have say, well, we can reach probably something like 50%, but nobody has a story on how to reach those 80% or those 70% on, uh, on CO2. So that's a problem. Well, the third problem is the car dependence. The car dependence uh, with, uh, that I wrote a book uh, uh, about, because people that have no car for them it's now not that problematic, but it will become more problematic when car dependency will still grow and star dependency is still growing. So the non-car uh, uh, households will face problems getting to surfaces with their accessibility to all sort of, um, all sort of situations. That's uh, rather uh, clear. Well, are there signs um, that we really change car mobility? Yes, a lot. Um, we are entering a phase of saturation of the growth of uh, 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 the car mobility in the last years, especially in Germany you see the saturation, not that much in, uh, in the Netherlands, France is more or less in between. Uh, and then 
we are now talking about can we reach at a certain moment a sort of situation of peak car that the car will not grow in the number of kilometers uh, traveled. What I find interesting is the whole situation of the attitude of the younger people who say, well, yes, at a certain moment we need a car, we need a driving license. The driving license, uh, getting driver's license at 18 is slowing down at the moment, but we need a car. Um, but it can be a, a rather strict car. We need a sort of basic mobility. We don't need all the gadgets, all the comfort that our parents had in the car. That's, that's one element. The other element is that they say, well, we don't need to own the car. We can do far more in car sharing. Well, the question, it's questionable whether that will stay as a, as, a, as a really a big trend or that the trend has something to do with the crisis, something to do with less money and so on and so forth. It's not completely clear, but it's an interesting sign, I, uh, I think. What is also interesting is um, that the, the idea of multimodality. Well, uh, why is car still important? Let's do, do the exchange between public transport, cars, and all sort of other um, modes. Well, um, basically lots of uh, academic people and lots of technicians talk about it relatively easy, but it's not easy at all. Look at it from a financial point of view. You already have paid for your car, each year, you pay a lot for your car. The car stands there, so the car has to be used, like, like your refrigerator. Uh, on the other hand, when you then go and say, well, I leave the car, I go this day by public transport, you have to pay the whole price for public transport because you don't get all those, all those funny uh, elements that people get who are going by public transport each and every day. So you basically pay twice and when we, are not able to succeed in overcome the financial problems that are faced with multimodality. Multimodality is just another gadget, another idea to talk about, but not something that really changes car mobility in some way or another. That um, are the, the, the big issues of today. Well, the sixth question is, are politicians, I've been a politician as I said myself, um, uh, are politicians really interested in all the material that I uh, talk about? Well, basically not. Um, that has to do with the fact that most politicians in our Western societies uh, are aiming at um, happiness and acceptance, more acceptance than happiness, with the big majority. And the big majority is the middle classes. The middle classes are 60 to 70 percent of their electorate and they look at the middle classes. The middle classes only have one problem, they can also always afford some, some way, somewhere a car, even two cars, but they have one problem and that's congestion. So basically the, the, the politicians are not busy with thinking about climate change for the 60 to 80 percent. You don't hear them very much about oil. They find that a far, far too difficult subject to really uh, uh, discuss and, and, uh, and frame. You don't hear them quite often with the non-car households, which are mostly, not all, certainly not all, poorer households. But you hear them each and all the time about accessibility framed in getting as speedy as possible from city A to city B. And you hear them about congestion. And basically congestion is only a problem because we have created such an arrangement in society that the, the timing of society is at the same moment 8 to 10 or 7 to 10 you have the rush hour because all the factories, all, uh, all the offices and all the services start at that moment. Well, we could do that in another way, but it seems to be rather difficult to do it in another way. That brings me to a big element where I would like to see politicians coming in, and that's timing of society. Time is very important. We are facing time stress, at least that the people that work, lots of the households face time stress. And time stress, the big helper in time stress, is always the car. Because with a car, you can rush around pretty easily. You, the car is flexible, and 
is the only possibility for time stress. Well, the bike in the Netherlands and in Denmark also is helping in time stress, but other elements like public transport are not basically helping. So we need a sort of timing and reframing of timing in society. That's basically, I think, very important.